Because of a small mistake I made early on. Are you gonna quit you now? Did you ever make a fail? Come on, Bob. Just do it. 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 What's up noobs, welcome to another devlog episode for Punch a Bunch. In this episode we're gonna attempt to fix the rig disaster we discovered last time, finish up our attack system, try out some rope dynamics, and design a logo. Ooh. I also have a little surprise for you guys, but more on that later. We just got back from our trip to Vancouver Island, which was amazing by the way, we had such a great time. Remember last time how I was mirroring over the animations and discovered that whole rig problem disaster? That would need me to basically start over from scratch? Well. You guys left so many comments with all kinds of ideas of how I could fix it. But okay, but I found this one comment that seemed really promising. Mostly because it's a full step-by-step -step instruction, which is um, good for people like me. But also because of this last step right here. See, I did not know that you were able to update existing skeletons within Unreal Engine. This might just be the solution to our entire problem. So the problem was that animations weren't flipping over correctly from the right side to the left. See how the shoulder has a different angle? Well, I'm just about to import the skeleton and if this thing works, the shoulder should pop into the right place. What? What? <laughs> this means I don't have to do any of the stuff I said last episode. We're good. We're good to go. Like this fixed it. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Congratulations, Morgan. You're officially the first person to make it on the pegboard of uh, fame. Oh, that sucks. Uh... I ran out of space. Congratulations. Damn it, what was the name again? <laughs> Epic pegboard. Epic noobs. Now that we finally have the rig working properly, we can continue where we left off last episode. I mirrored over the punch animations we created for the right hand to the left hand in Blender. Why do I have to click like this to move the NLA strips down? Like, so dumb. This should be like a hotkey. No. Oh, there is. Great. I set up enum states that keep track of which hand is being charged up. This allows me to just run exactly what we had before as an attack system and then just check which hand is being used and then the fires off the correct animation. The question is, will this all work? Whoa, I'm so not used to using the left arm, it's so weird. <laughs> That's cool, you'll definitely have like a favorite arm, like if you're, you know, probably if you're right-handed, you're gonna prefer boxing with your right hand, which is, you know, realistic. Oh, and that brings me to um, some comments. Many of you commented on my last video that uh, you thought I should leave the rigging issue because then that would make one arm weaker than the other. Yes, that's a great idea. But instead of doing that, we're gonna have it that it's kind of tricky to punch and basically the hand you develop the most and you practice with is the one you're gonna be better at, right? So I kind of want to leave it up to the player and I don't want you to have to like choose which arm beforehand. It's, it's more like a limitation of the player than the game itself. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. That's also why if you notice the stance, it looks kind of weird. Like it's just standing like front on, like a real boxer would be standing more like on the side, right? But our boxers stand like this, uh, which looks a little clunky, but I also think it's kind of part of the charm in a way. But uh, yeah, so that's why I've designed it that way. So that it's more up to the player than the game itself. Okay, so before we move on, I want to kind of address something. A few of you have mentioned that the red boxing wing is kind of distracting, like it sort of burns your eyes a little. And our boxing gloves are red as well, which means that they kind of get lost in the background when you're punching and the hands are moving really fast. So I want to do something about that. Now I tried making the boxing ring gray, but 
just looks boring. So I think this is a great opportunity to start working on a logo. I mean, it doesn't have to be final or anything like that, but I just want something to put in there. Also, I'm kind of running out of ideas for thumbnails, so it would really help with that as well. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So first things first, reference. I'm thinking like retro pop art, 80s arcade banners. What comes to mind, of course, is uh, Super Punch-Out on the Super NES. I like the idea of these retro ones. See, most of them use this like um, red yellow color scheme, which goes really well with our game, right? However, uh, see a lot of these fonts are really quite sharp and I'm thinking I want something a little softer looking. There's this bubble tea place near work and I just love their menu. It looks so good, like a Japanese type looking font. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. I was looking around a bit on Japanese fonts, but it just looked a little too clean. And so I found this one, which has a little bit of irregularities to it, which makes it a little bit more cartoony. And I think we kind of need that. It's not too much, but just a hint. So I got something like this, which I thought was kind of okay, at least for a start, but uh, I showed Viv and she said it reads more like uh, a punch bunch instead of punch a bunch, which is true. So she suggested to put the A in between the text instead, and I think that works a lot better. I'm also playing around with the idea of adding like boxing gloves somewhere. I mean, these are just boxing gloves I found on Google, so I'll have to make something myself at some point, but uh, this is just like a placeholder to see what it could look like potentially. I think it could look pretty cool, but for now, I think I'm just gonna stick with the text and put that onto our boxing ring and see what it looks like. But I think we're off to a great start. I quickly UV map the boxing ring and set it up so that I can quickly create different skins for the ring in the future. I'm also thinking I could share this with you guys and you can come up with designs as well. Smash like for custom designs. Oh, this looks official. I like it. I like it. I think it's good. It's it's clean. What do you boys and girls think? Remember how a few weeks ago I broke my lens? I did a post about it. Well, that was this lens. I was able to glue it back together just using Gorilla Glue, but it's only a matter of time before the lens comes apart again. So to prevent any future delay of devlogs, I ordered a new piece and it arrived today. So we're gonna have to surgically open this lens up, replace this part and put it back together. There, crispy. Okay, so punches. We have our animations for both arms. All we really need at this point is a reliable way to determine which attack the player wants to do. Jab, uppercut, hook, and so on. I played around with a few different ideas. I built a system that can detect in which direction the upper body is moving. I was thinking the movement direction could determine which attack would fire as you punch, but it's just too volatile. And to be honest, <laughs> it doesn't make much sense and it's hard to tune it so that it actually works. I still think it's a cool system and I have a feeling it will come handy down the line, but for now I'm just gonna park it. Instead, I decided to go with something much simpler. To make it more obvious, I put these bubbles here that display which attack is loaded for each hand. So I've got these three attack states, straight punch, hook, and uppercut, and each hand has an independent attack state. So let me show you how it works. If I lean to one side, the hook for that hand will be loaded. See that? So if I attack now, a hook will be fired. And if you lean back from this state, the uppercut will be loaded. It's actually really hard to pull off an uppercut. I might need to tweak that eventually. I hope this makes sense. It actually feels really good when you're punching. It's really intuitive and feels natural. <laughs> oh, okay, that reminds me. Uh, a lot of you have been asking for me to do, you wanna basically bounce off against a rope into the ring and get extra power. That's cool, we need to have that. I found this thing called a cable component and I thought, hells to the yeah, this is gonna be lit. It seems to do exactly the right thing until, oh, wait. What the? Ah, okay, hold on. Hold on a second here. Mm-hmm. Physics, yes. <laughs> what is this shit? Is this supposed to work? Is 
Is this good? Is this good physics? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, 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 it's working. Okay, this is the secret to making the physics work with the ropes. You have to do all that. <laughs> okay. Screw this cable garbage, it's not working. So instead of the cables, I tried using splines by setting up the system which basically... Actually, don't worry, there's no way you'll understand what this shit does. I mean, I just followed a tutorial blindly, like I don't know. But, it seems to be doing the right thing, which is good. I just gotta figure out a way to make the collision between the boxer and the rope detect somehow manually and then like adjust the spline point so that it kind of moves with the boxer. I think that would work because I think we're gonna leave this now. This was just sort of like a little extra thing. I think this is definitely on the right track and we're one step closer to having spongy ropes. But we'll do that a bit later. But anyways, that was cool. That was fun. So about the little surprise I mentioned earlier, a lot of you have been asking for a Discord channel. You want, you get. So I opened one. I'm still working on setting up the rooms and the rolls and all that stuff and I want to make sure that it's perfect for you guys. So uh, it's not quite ready yet, but I'll post it on Twitter as soon as it's ready. All right, next up, we're gonna add particle effects when we hit our opponent. Yes, finally. I, I can't even count the amount of comments I've been getting about that. So it's happening, but we're gonna save that for the next one. If you don't wanna miss the next episode, you know what to do, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.